Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming together. And we thank you for the privilege of being involved in teaching, counseling, helping, leading your people. We know it's a privilege. None of us is truly and fully qualified. But you have chosen us. And we are praying, O oh Lord, you grant us everything we need. So we'll be successful in the work in Jesus' name. Again, bless us tonight. And make us channels of blessing to your church. In Jesus' name, we pray. In First Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continuing them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Save thyself and them that hear thee. Tonight I'm talking to you on our double responsibility. Here Paul, the apostle by the spirit of God, was talking to Timothy. And you know Timothy was a leader, a pastor over a church. And he had great, great responsibility. And great were the things that uh, just lay ahead of Timothy. And if you read the first epistle and the second epistle, uh, you will see the very many things that uh, the Lord was telling Timothy through the apostle Paul. I was telling him the things he needed to do. And the way he needed to endure hardness and do that work. The work of an evangelist and the work of a teacher and the work of a pastor and the work of selecting qualified people to get the work done but now he told him he said timothy take it to yourself you know sometimes the work can be some can become so heavy and especially when you love the lord and you love the work of god and you just want to get people saved and you want to see how to edify people and how to mature people that you forget that you have a soul to save. That's why Paul told Timothy. And that's why the Lord is telling you today. That your responsibility is not just to preach. It's not just to talk to others. Take heed unto your very self. And unto the doctrine. Then it says, continue in them. Continue in the doctrines. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes you people get tired when they become familiar with something. And they're looking for the, a fart. They're looking for something sensational. They're looking for something new. They're looking for something exciting. They're looking for something extraordinary. They're looking for the supernatural. And uh, they're looking for something different. And it says, Timothy, continue in the doctrine. Nothing extraordinary, nothing sensational, and nothing that is new. Just continue in the doctrine. And then it says, in doing that, number one, you'll save yourself. That's your number one responsibility. You have a soul to save, your own soul. And then you will save them that hear thee. In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 21. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 21. Nevertheless, if thou want the righteous man, that the righteous man sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live. You have saved him. Not only that, because he is one, also thou hast delivered thy soul you have a responsibility to make sure that to yourself that you are saved uh, there is this salvation we have got praise the lord by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of god yes you are saved but i still an ultimate salvation there's still a final salvation and only those who endure to the end 
shall be saved. And you want to make sure that the duties and responsibilities of ministry will not make you to forget yourself and to forget that if you save millions of people and your soul is lost eh, there is no profit in that that's why the number one thing for you to take care of is your own salvation every day making sure the lord is still there the righteousness is there and should the lord come at any time and should you die any day or should the rapture take place any time you will experience you will have that ultimate final salvation point number one the responsibility of saving yourself the responsibility of saving yourself first corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 but i keep under my body here is an apostle do you keep under your mouth do you keep under your feet apostle preacher coordinator or you feel that now you've gone to such a level that no matter what happens you're saved forever saved here the apostle said i have a responsibility towards myself i keep under my body the flesh that will try to war against the spirit that will try to disturb you temptations that will come i keep under my body and bring it into subjection you know the problem in leadership the problem in leadership is we talk about submission subjection we want others to submit but we're so concerned about others submitting to us that we ourselves don't make our body to submit to our spirit it says i bring my flesh i bring my body i bring my life under subjection into subjection under control lest that by any means when i appeal to others i myself should be a castaway i should be disqualified for heaven i should become a reprobate and that means then you have a personal responsibility Hey, don't get so uh, so busy and so excited about the privilege of ministry and the privilege of doing this and doing that that you forget your own soul your relationship with god and you minister and minister you're busy praying for this and counseling this and talking here and going here going there you forget that god has no favorites that if you don't live a righteous life, a life that is in accordance with the word of God, that no matter what you've done in the past, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and he commits iniquity and I put a stumbling block before him and then you warn him Ezekiel and he does not repent and he remains in iniquity all his righteousness which he has done before shall not be remembered in his iniquity in his sin which he has now committed in them shall he die songs of solomon chapter one verse six look not on me because i am black i want you to understand here the fellow speaking here is not um, a black african he is a jewish person that is white in the color of the skin and then he says do you know that i so much forgot to even take my spiritual birth here clean through the word that has spoken unto you do you know that how shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to thy word do you know that i forgot to take my spiritual birth 
so much, so much, so often, you cannot even look at me now because my white skin has changed to black. I'm dirty because the sun has looked upon me. You know, with the sweat and the dirt and no time to bath, no time to clean up, no time to wash in the world by the water of the world. And my mother's children were angry with me. What did they do to you? They made me the keeper of the vineyards. And my own vineyard have I not kept. Uh, you become so wrapped up with responsibility and duty. That you forget yourself. They made me the keeper of vineyards. And it gave me responsibility and responsibility and responsibility. And I forgot to take care of my own vineyard. Hey, you are taking care of other people's souls. Don't you know? Your very first responsibility is to take care of your own soul. And it's, it's, it appears difficult for some people. You just get used to duty, activity, responsibility and that's all right it's good to be zealous but it's also all right to remember that you want to get to heaven and the duties and responsibilities of ministry will not replace righteousness and holiness and you know you can become so good in doing some things because they tell us that practice makes perfect that is, when you are practicing something, practicing something, and you know, ministry is practice, is performance, and that regular performance makes you perfect in the performance, that you just do it like this, and it's marvelous. Yet, you become so used to it, that you forget inner righteousness, inner purity, your lifestyle, in Matthew chapter 24, and remember from verse 3 that it was uh, the apostles, the disciples of the Lord, leaders in the early church that asked this question. 24 verse 3, and as they sat upon the Mount of Olives, is the disciples came unto him privately. Then he asked a question. And he was in the midst of asking that, answering that question. He now said in verse 44, therefore, apostles, be ye also ready. For in such hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Preachers, leaders in this church, be ye also ready. You think about it. We can say almost without fear of contradiction that the majority of us are more concerned about our activities in the church than keeping a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. But the Lord has made it very clear. You have a responsibility personal. Be ready. Because in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful servant and wise servant? Whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom when his Lord cometh, he cometh and he shall find him so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delays is coming. You know, the Lord is talking about his own servant, sir. He's talking about you. And then he shall begin to smite his fellow servants. And to eat and to drink or the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come. In a day when he looketh not for him. And in an hour that he is not aware of. And shall cut him asunder. He was saved. Even the Lord himself made him a ruler. He was not just a floor member in the church. He was a leader. But because 
he became negligent about his own soul. And all that concerned him now was just beat the people to submission. Make them submit by all means. Oppress them, harass them, beat them down, use force, use anything, get them under control. By all means, the Lord of that servant shall come in an hour. When this servant who has forgotten to keep his soul, when he thinketh not, and he'll cut him asunder, appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I was talking about hellfire already there. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Verses 8 and 9. There is no man that has power over his spirit to retain the spirit. Neither see power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. He's talking about the end of man. The, end, the time comes when the end of man comes. And no man can say, no, I don't want to die now. When death comes, it's finished. Then he says in the next verse, All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work, unto every work that is done under the sun. What did you notice, Solomon? There is a time wherein one man rules over another to his own heart. There is a time when you take that leadership responsibility, leadership role, you take it too far. And you rule over another to your own spiritual heart. You forget yourself. And then you are hurt, and if you are hurt eternally, and remember, he spoke about death in the earlier verse. And then in this next verse, now he says, on the day of judgment, there are people that will be there, and they will discover it is their leadership, they are ruling, they are being in control, and they are trying to fulfill those responsibilities. You rule over other people to your own heart. I'm calling upon you to please be wise. We should be asking a question in Acts chapter 16. Verse 30. He brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Yes, I know he had not been born again. Now you are born again already. But since Jesus said, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. You should be asking yourself, what do I do? So that I'll be able to experience and have that final ultimate salvation. What shall I do? And you want to know every time how to keep everything in your own life under control. So that you will not perish. Number two. The responsibility of saving others. Yes, you have the responsibility to save yourself. Very important. And it's number one. It's a priority. But, number two, the responsibility of saving others. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is me, is unto me, if I preach not the gospel. You know, I don't know whether you understand the conflict in the soul. is a conflict that we read about tonight concerning Jeremiah. And the Lord said that I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. And he told him how the road will be, what the challenges will be. But even though he knew before he got to the middle, you know how many chapters there are in Jeremiah? Before you got to the middle, he said, I just felt I need to save my soul. And the way these children of Israel, the way they are going and the way they are behaving and the way they are responding, if I'm not careful, I will even lose my own soul. And when I cry, they shout this, this is the way they respond and they react. And then he said, although the Lord had said, 
you are a prophet before you were even born. And I've appointed you over the nations to pull down and to destroy and to demolish and to raise up and to build and to plant. I know the prophecy. I know the things written concerning me. Yet, I have to save my soul. I have to think about myself. I have to think about my eternity. I have to think about my relationship with God. I won't let these children of Israel cause trouble for me so that I don't perish. So I said, finished. I'll not make mention of his name anymore. So I kept quiet. He said, do you know what? He himself wrote later, uh, just uh, three, uh, three chapters after that, he said, it's not my word like fire, says the Lord. He said, the word was shut up within me. And it was burning me like fire. And I saw the people. And I see them going down the drain and perishing. And I said, not me again. Preach, not me. Prophesy, not me. And the one I did, all these chapters uh, 2 to 19, where is the effect? No more. And then he said, and I could not forbear. It's like the Lord is saying, I know. You are torn in between two things. On the one hand, you need to save your soul. On the other hand, I've sent you to talk to these people. And it doesn't appear that the revival you are expecting, the renewal you are expecting, the regeneration you are expecting, and the transformation, the righteousness. You want to say, I know Jeremiah, you don't see it. That's why you are getting this. But I'm not going to leave you alone. I see give you responsibility. What's that responsibility? The responsibility of saving others. And that's why Paul the Apostle said, Though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. Necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Uh, that's the responsibility you and I have. And whatever the heat of the day, and whatever the sweat of labor, and whatever the trouble and the trial of ministry, how can, we, how can we dodge the responsibility? How can we get tired? You just make sure that personal holiness is there, personal righteousness is there, and then keep on, go on. In Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verse 14, I am debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. He said, hey, you know what? The Spirit of God is putting so much pressure on me. And uh, you, you, you understand why. Because, uh, let me show you. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm reading to you there. In the experience of Paul, the apostle. It said in verse 24, Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one, thirty-nine. Three times was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in the perils in the city, in the sea, in perils among false bread and weariness, painfulness, watchings, often hunger, thirst, fasting, cold, nakedness. Obviously, that man will be tired. And he wanted to still save, his, save himself. Lest after preaching to others, he'll become a castaway. And then, you know, some people were talking bad about him. And, you know, some people were not, they were not wise. And he went to Paul. And he said, Paul, you're just running about and walking about. Do you know what they are saying about you? And if he said he didn't want to hear, they said, but you need to hear, I need to tell you. Okay, what are they saying? They said that you are mad. They said you become eccentric. 
And he said, you are ugly. And he said that even what you are writing, all those things you are doing, they said, they are worthless. And he said, all those things you are doing, bad. And you know, with everything that you went through, and with all these unwise people who are telling, reporting back to him, that they are abusing you, they are insulting you. Look at chapter 10. Chapter 10 verse 1. Now, I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence I am based among you. He accepted. He accepted. But, being absent, I am bold towards you. Verse 10. For his letters they say are witchy and powerful. But his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible you know all those bad bad things people were saying about him these people were not even wise they went to tell him and that man could easily get discouraged that's why he said but what can i do i have responsibility in saving others and that's and that's your responsibility too whatever people say about you and whatever people think about you whatever lies whatever insult whatever stories they carry about about you and you have no you have no chance to even defend yourself how are you going to defend yourself do you know how many places they have told those untrue stories about you but because of the responsibility of saving others you say i am debtor both to the greek and to the barbarians both to the wise and to the unwise and that's why you, you need to be up and doing still keep on saving souls in james chapter 5 james chapter 5 verse 19 brethren if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Hey, there are people that have been brethren among you, among us, and they have erred from the truth. If you know anybody like that, you have a responsibility towards them. And if any of you do err from the truth, and one, convert him, not that one will go and confuse him, make him unhappy, make him sorrowful, tell him things about the pastor, about the church, that will seal up his mind, harden his heart. If anybody errs from the truth, and you become concerned, because that's your responsibility, and one, convert him, let him know that he that converts this sinner that's the backslider from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and then by that the multitude of sins that he has committed will be covered because of your ministry towards him but when you do it be careful jude verse 21 to verse 23 keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Or some have compassion, making a difference. Have compassion on them. If anybody has gone astray, if anybody has taken a wrong decision, and the fellow is thinking, I'm in the right way. The Lord told me, the Lord spoke to me. I'm sure of this. Whatever anybody says, I know I'm doing right. And, and you know he's wrong. Have compassion on them. Making a difference. Others save with fear. It's like somebody is, a, is in a burning house. And you want to rush in to pull him out. You do it with fear. So that while you're doing that, the burning house will not burn you up too when people have gone away they have a lot of things to say that's unbelievable unimaginable and if you are not well fortified yourself 
And you say you are going to reach them before you come back. You are shifted away from your foundation yourself. That's why it says, Others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. The point is very clear. You have the responsibility of saving others. Point number three. Readiness for final salvation. Readiness for final salvation. Uh, we need to make sure we're ready for that final salvation. Hebrews chapter 12. You think you know it, but open it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men. And what? Tell me out loud. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Please always remember. You are here today. I pray you will always be here. But who knows? The wind might blow. That you are here today. And you are not here tomorrow. Physically. No problem. But anywhere you are, whether here or there, if you want us to meet in heaven, remember, when you are in that other place, anywhere you are, doesn't matter. God doesn't have names of denominations in heaven. Baptist, Deep Alive, Anglican, Methodist, Pentecostal, whatever, doesn't matter. But wherever you find yourself, remember, Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And it is not holiness by the definition of man. It is holiness by the definition of God. Holiness according to the Bible. Holiness as described in the Holy Bible. Holiness as painted by the hand of the divine painter. That without that Holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And anywhere you find yourself, you don't believe holiness because you are in deeper life. It's not because you are here. It's because the word of God that had been written before anybody in deeper life was born, before the name deeper life Bible church ever came into existence, that Bible had been written. Follow peace with all men. And... Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And my interest is not just to keep you here physically. If you are here and you are not holy, you are as bad as people that are out there. If you are over there on the other side, not here, and you are holy, and you are righteous, you are better than anybody inside here who is not holy. So my interest is not to build up denomination. My interest is to call anyone, everyone, wherever I have a chance, to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. In Psalm 15. Psalm 15, I'm reading to you from verse 1. Examine your life with all these that we read in the word of God. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh. You see that is continuous tense. Walking, walking, walking. He that walketh uprightly. Walketh righteousness. Speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue. Nor doeth evil to his neighbor. Nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned, belittled, separated from, avoided. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. Was I the one that forced you when you knelt down? When you made a vow, when you told the Lord, you will serve the Lord. Was I the one that came to put words in your mouth? When you said, so, this kind of preaching is in the world. 
and I've been in another place I didn't know, and I came. See, see, as I'm hearing this word of God, <laughs> you know, one man he told me just this Sunday. He said when he came and he was hearing the word, he asked. He said, "Is that person they are talking? Is that an angel?" And he was serious. He was sincere. Is that an angel or a man? And he said, "It's a man like us." He went on his knees and he prayed and became born again. And then he'll be rushing to the Bible study. And he'll be saying, Lord, anything that will take me out of this place, kill me before, before I backslide. Anything that will take me away from hearing this word of God, don't let it ever come to me. Was I the one that came to put words in your mouth to pray when you prayed? You want to get to heaven? He that swear to his own heart. I have no problem with you anywhere you go. The problem is what you told the Lord with your own mouth. When a man makes a vow, let him not delay to pay it. Why should God condemn you? Because of the words of your mouth. What did you tell the Lord? Was I the one that told you when you said, This holiness, I believe it. I'm going to die in holiness. I, I, was, I didn't tell you how to pray like that. You prayed like that yourself? Was I the one that, full time workers, was I the one that came to your house to pull you, to drag you, to beg you? Were you not the one that came? And some of you, the first time you came, I said no. You came back again. I said, no, you came back again. You said the Lord did not allow you to rest. You have made a vow. You have made a commitment. You want to do it. And was okay if it is like that. Come. And now you, like this, like this. That's not my problem. It's between you and the Lord. He that swear to his own heart. And he changes not. And he that putteth not out his money to usury. Nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. I don't know about you, but I can talk for myself. <laughs> that I know what I told the Lord. And I know that His grace is available to do what needs to be done. And He can help you. I said He can help you. But you know, getting to heaven has a requirement. And for you to be ready. For that final salvation. Here it is. Where will you be? And you don't know when you will die. You don't know when you will die. I'm not happy when people die. But this is fact of life. Members here. Who are here. Either physically or they were in another state. But they were deeper like people. And they were alive last month. This month. They are not alive. Physical. We know it. They didn't know. The message they were hearing, which was the last message, they didn't know it was the last message. They didn't know. But now they've gone to the great beyond. It happened to them. It can happen to any of us. Where will you spend eternity? Oh, you don't believe? This is we're saying. That without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And you think you'll come next week? Who knows? Please, prepare to meet the Lord your God. I'll be happy if you get to heaven. But you have to pray. And whatever has to be crushed, crucified, not that of your life, it has to be done. No other time. Today is that time. Rise up and pray.
Have you forgotten how to pray? Personal prayer. The only prayer you know how to pray is praying for other people. Have you forgotten how to pray for yourself? Don't play with your soul. Activity, labor, leadership, running up and down will not take you to heaven. Be sincere. When you came, you are not looking for position. You are not looking to rule over people, to control people. You came so that you can be saved, live a holy life, prepare for heaven. That's why you came. 